Welcome to this LNR training video, MITS 101. This video will be the first in what will eventually be a series of MITS training videos. It will explain what MITS is, its most basic elements, and how you can use it to build reports for your business purposes. So let's jump right in. At LNR Distributors, we currently have a database called Prelude. Prelude contains data on sales, customers, reset activity, service reps, and on and on. Prelude has a purpose and serves that purpose well, but it's basically just raw data. And that's where MITS comes in. MITS is an acronym for Management Information Tools. It's a program accessible from a website in which you can expose and collect data from our Prelude system in a manner you desire and that serves your business purposes. In MITS, you'll create reports, decide what data goes in those reports, and save those reports in your personal MITS library. Most importantly, your reports are automatically updated as data in Prelude is updated. The reports you create can be simple or tremendously complex. So you see, MITS is all about you and your business needs. So let's head to MITS and try it all out. And that means on to the World Wide Web at mits.lrdist.com. MITS is secured by a personal login that you would have requested and received from the fine folks at LNR's IT department. Once in, you're on the home page. Here we change our terminology a bit. Reports that are created in MITS are called flash screens, and any created flash screens reside in libraries. In this case, we have the common library open with all the available flash screens visible and available that reside in that library. Notice the drop down list for libraries. Also, note that everyone's selection of libraries might be a little different depending on their position and responsibilities with LNR. So let's navigate about and go to another library. How about this, guys? There ought to be some good stuff in here. With my library open, you'll see flash screens that I've created. Click on the desired flash screen, and you'll see the rows and columns that I created for this flash screen. In this case, individual Deerberg stores for the rows. You can down arrow to see more and address information and specific sales information for my columns. Also notice the data that's been collected from Prelude and deposited in my flash screen basically at my request. And even though I created this flash screen back in 2009, the data, because it's constantly being updated in Prelude, is current to today. Now let's back out of this existing flash screen and start the process of creating a new one. Just click on the new icon, then custom. The trending selections will be another video. Remember this is MITS 101. Here we have decisions to make and a new MITS element, hypercubes. Hypercubes are prelude data broken down into usable segments such as resets, budget sales, tasks, and allied sales. It's here that you start determining columns for your flash screen. There's a lot to look at in these hypercubes, but for our current video we'll concentrate on allied sales and jump down to available columns. And you'll see there's a lot of categories of allied sales data here. From budget, cost dead net, profit, returns, sales. I'm going to work my way all the way down to units sold. And let's say we want in our report information about units sold by year to date, last period end. We'll expand that, got a lot more options. Units sold year to date through the end of July for this year. We'll take that one then through the end of July 11. 
same with 10. We've got three columns at this point for our report. Now we could keep digging into the hypercube and find everything we might want in this report, but we're just going to go with those three. We click OK, and we'll see the start of our report. It has no title yet, but it has the three columns of information or data we're looking for. Now you might notice in the rows we only have allied sales and we really don't have any data coming through yet. But this is where you drill down and start really digging for your information. Anytime your row heading or column heading are in light blue, you're able to click on it and make modifications or additions to your report. I'm going to click on Allied Sales and you see what's available to me as customer. And I have decisions to make as to how I want to get my customers into my report. I can click, click Expand and all my customers will come up, in this case Deerberg's, Neiman's, and Schnucks. I'll go back to Allied Sales, to Customer. I'll go to Expand by Specific Value. That allows me to choose which one of those three I want. I'll take Deerberg's. Notice in the meantime that data has started to come over and it's it, it's in the form I asked for. Unit sales through July of 2012 and on across. But this remains blue and say at this point I want to see the unit sale information by store. I'll open this up. I have quite a few options such as salesman and vendor, but I'm going to go to ship to customer and I'm going to expand. And now I see all my stores. Navigate down. Notice that as your report gets bigger and bigger, you have some choices to make on your navigation toolbars at the bottom and across the top. But now let's say I want to dig even deeper. And I want to know the cover girl units sold at Deerberg's number one. So I click on that and go to vendor. I want to expand by a specific value. And I want that to be cover girl. OK it. And I'll have the information for store number one cover girl units sold per my columns. Now let's say we want that same CoverGirl information for every Deerberg store. I'm going to back up to Deerberg's Market, go back to Ship 2, and expand to all my stores. Then I'm going to go to one of the stores. We'll just go to store number one, to Vendor. I want to go to Expand All Rows by Specific Value. I'll choose CoverGirl and OK it. And I have all my stores and I have the CoverGirl information for each store. I'm going to go one step further, go to Store 1, the CoverGirl line, go to Product, I'm going to expand, and you'll see now that I see every SKU authorized for Deerberg's. Notice also that the print has turned to black, meaning I cannot drill down any deeper. I've drilled down as far as I can go. Now let's switch over to the columns where you can do modifications there too. You can delete columns, you can add columns, you can even rearrange columns. All those things are done by either clicking on a column or up in the modify, uh, clicking on the modify icon up on the flash screen toolbar. In this case, let's say we want the units year to date for 2009. I'm going to click on here. There's other choices here, but we're just going to concentrate on insert column before or after. We're going to insert the column after. I'll go down to units, year to date, 09, and you see the fourth column has been added. That finishes up our report. We have everything in it we want. Notice up at the top on the flash screen toolbar there are some options. You can email this report. You can, ex you can export it either as a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or an Adobe PDF file into one of your computer's drives. You can print it, turn it into a chart, change the display features, 
and modify it and save it. And that's what we're going to do at this point is save into our library. So it's going into the Robert Hoag Library. We're going to change the screen name to Deerberg's Unit Sales. Click Save. Head back to our home page. And you can see in the Robert Hoag Library, Deerberg's Unit Sales. From here, the key to understanding MITs and turning it into a valuable tool? Experimenting. Get into the various hypercubes to see what Prelude information is available. And be creative. With so much data available in Prelude, your report possibilities are nearly endless. Subsequent MITs videos will explain other elements of this important and flexible management information tool. And that concludes this LNR training video, MITS 101.